All right, here's the deal. I've been waiting six weeks for something I've been pretty excited for, and it is finally here. So let's take a quick look at it. I could not resist taking the top off this and starting to take a sneak peek, but this is a hood for the FC from Shine Auto. And this hood is the pan speed style hood with the drop vent in it. So before we pull everything out, I gotta talk really quick about why we're doing this and where this came from. So I like learning stuff. And for some reason I fixate on certain things. And in this particular one was race arrow and essentially not just body kit stuff, but how like cooling performance and all that works. And as you guys may know, I'm trying to turbo the RX-7, right? And go through that whole thing. I have a front mount intercooler. I started reading about that and kind of seeing some inefficiency with that system. So I started looking at, you know, hoods that can work with like a V-mount setup. In doing so, besides the turbo setup, I kind of started to realize how important like duct work and different shapes and vectors can be for just your cooling system in general. Now, besides that point, anybody who owns an 80s sports car knows that there's just all these forums from the early 2000s about all these cool vendors and things. And in modern day, like none of those companies are still around. So it gets pretty difficult to find some of these like cool one-off parts that you see from like old retro stuff, like 90s, 2000s tuner mags and things like that. On top of that, if you Google like an aftermarket hood for an FC, you get like the same hood that's just sold by a bunch of different vendors. And it's got kind of this blocky shape and it doesn't really go with the lines of the car. I know people run them, but you know, I wasn't really feeling it. So after some late night Googling, I came across Shine Auto Project in an old like 2001 forum, I think. Saw both of their hood options, which were pretty sick, but went over to the website and it said they were not producing them. So that was kind of like, ah, and then brought back down again. But, you know, it was the style I wanted. Like, it was everything about what I was trying to do and how I wanted to play around with this cooling little journey. So, sent them an email and responded really quick, and they said they can produce it one off. So, I'm like, all right, let's do it. Let's move forward. Six weeks later, that gets us to where we are now, where we're going to start test fitting this thing, get it set up for the hood pins and all that business. And fun fact about this, I looked on the website recently after it got delivered, and they are now producing these again. They're not discontinued, so they are going back into full production, which is cool. And before we get any further, what do you think? Do you think we even paint match, same paint color, or do you think we go with like a carbon finish or something? It is an FRP hood. So either way, down in the comments below, let me know what color do you think we should go with for this? Some carbon color or the stock color we already have on the car? I'm thinking stock color. Okay, I'm going to get this pulled out of here. Set it down over there so we can start taking all the plastic and stuff off of it. This is boring, isn't it? I, I feel like this is boring. I'm probably losing your attention. So let's... Uh, Engage the old YouTube snap. Boom. So it's a pretty traditional hood, but at the same time you have this drop vent here. And you can picture with a V-mount setup or your radiator sitting about here, you can duct that heat right out of the top of the car instead of having it soak in the engine bay. Now, is this made to be functional? Not necessarily. I think this is generally made for looks, but we're going to try to make it functional. That's the challenge of all this. That's where I'm kind of, I think I'm going to enjoy my time is trying to make use of this opening and make it a functional thing. Now, over here, we also have some dimples here for our uh, windshield sprayers. Not that mine work on the RX-7. They could. I just need to replace the pump. But then we got this little drop vent here. I'm not sure what this would have been used for. I mean, the turbo on the Turbo 2 would sit here, so I don't know if there's a cooling element where this would have been cut open for cooling, but either way, we might be able to do something cool with that. Maybe when we do the turbo, we just put a freaking wastegate dump right there. I, I don't know. I also picked up a set of these Arrow Catch hood pins with latches. I uh, got pretty good reviews there. A lot of people use them. Uh, they do require a pretty big hole in the hood, so I went ahead and got this cutout tool. Everything I've got is Makita, so I went with the cutout tool. Hopefully, I can make a good enough cut with this that uh you know it's clean that's basically what i'm looking for so get this stuff out and uh, we'll see when we can get that sucker off put this on and start feeling out where it's gonna go Okay, time to get the old radiator out. Just go ahead and take the air inlet off here as well as the duct and the fan. So we'll get to popping that all off and uh, start making our mock-up. Got this 
bracket on this side, and the bracket over here. Go ahead and get our heater hose and the lower hose and the upper hose off here. Should come right up out. Get this stuff loose. I'll have to unscrew that and unscrew that. Okay, next up, I'm gonna get this air pump off of here. You just gotta unhook this hose. There's a bolt here for the tension, bolt there that mounts it. It might only have two mounting points, but that would be great. Either way, I'll take those off, get the belt off, and uh, pull that whole assembly out while we have the space. Okay, we're gonna keep taking stuff off. So next up is the alternator. Okay, now I'm gonna take these brackets off, both sides of the radiator there, and get them set up on the new radiator. All right, after hunting around for some shrouds, I was able to find what seems to be a pretty good fitting shroud here. Got some uh, foam pad tape with it, but everything about this fits the dimensions of the core. And I think I'm gonna put some little surrounds here to bring it down in so it's an even tighter fit. But uh, this is the Assault Racing products. Well, it's like on Amazon, so it's universal fit for a 28 by 19 radiator. But like I said, you can see it comes up, you know, a little bit up the tank on both sides. And then we'll close off that edge there good for a 16 inch fan one thing it is not good for however is fitting in between these two edges here these two pipes so i'm just going to trim a little bit off of each side so we can slide it in there maybe a little bit more than a little bit enough that it won't rub okay so we'll take off the bottom side with both ends clearance. Oh, all kinds of space. That's gonna work. Good. Okay, so I've gone ahead and applied the uh, foam padding here. Kind of make this edge seal you can see it goes along that weld it's applied to this plate and uh same deal over here that way we can get a you know a nice tight fit around the radiator now i've got some on the edge i'm just going to double check because i have it kind of running off the back of this plate and then some on the side of the radiator here a couple things i did get i bought some uh eighth inch flat stock here part of that is i could set this in here and kind of bend it to the edge shape to create a close a closure if need be but i know there's a bracket stock bracket that goes right here for mounting. So I, I don't want to encroach that space too much. And the other thing I can use this for is I can use it to make my tabs to uh, bolt on the shroud in the first place. Right now, I don't particularly have a way to weld aluminum. I could get like a spool gun and MIG weld, but I'm wondering if maybe just like having like a rivet system or something where I just rivet it to this plate would do the job. But even those aren't really like, uh, they take up a lot of space. So more to come on that to see what makes the most sense as far as how do I, you know, how do I keep it not protruding or anything like riding against the radiator itself because I just want that connection to be soft. So I think for now, I'll go ahead and uh, get the holes drilled for the fans. We know the fan is where we want it to be.
before I throw this thing in the car, I gotta make a couple brackets out of this aluminum so that I can bolt it onto the radiator, bolt the shroud onto the radiator, and then you gotta rivet those to the shroud and uh, just make sure everything's gonna look nice and snug, so. shroud brackets set up the shroud itself go ahead and get these drilled for the mounting holes and then uh, make sure everything fits up nice and snug and this is ready to go back in just went to put this in and I realized I forgot the freaking temperature control module for the fan I'm gonna lie, I kind of had hoped that I could do this separately. That way it would be a little bit easier to uh, control where I was putting the wires and everything. Cause there's a lot of wires with this, more than I thought. I've never done an E-fan setup before. Um, we're just gonna jump into it and see where we need to get the probe and, and go from there. All right, guys, we need a few more parts. They're on their way, so stay tuned. We'll keep moving with this. It's uh, turned into a little bit of a uh, uh, scope creep on this thing or build creep, but I think you'll enjoy it. Got some fun other parts to put on there. <laughs> 